will runner's knee heal by itself? Well, not according to researchers from the University of Melbourne. I was doing a free strategy call the other day with a runner who was having trouble with her knee since she took up running about 18 months ago. And she'd been doing PT for months and months now and wasn't getting anywhere. And during the course of our sort of interview, I asked her um, something that made her think, you know, what, what if I just kind of let this play out, see where it goes? And she said, well, does it heal on its own? Like, does it just get better on its own if you don't do anything about it? Now, this is a really good question. There's actually a few research studies that have looked at this. And today we're going to talk about one that was done by those researchers at the University of Melbourne and was published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to read the whole thing. Now, this is important to talk about because a lot of runners believe when they develop knee pain that it's okay to just wait and see, to just wait and see if it goes away on its own. And, you know, this is actually quite a reasonable thing to believe when you consider other injuries. So if you've ever sprained your ankle or strained a muscle or had a bruise or even other like repetitive stress injuries like um, shin splints, for example, most of these things you don't do anything and they just kind of get better on their own. They just heal spontaneously and all you have to do is wait and the body will just take care of it for you. So what we're looking at here with patellofemoral pain is does that happen for patellofemoral pain, which is a little different, right? Because it's a repetitive stress injury. So if you just ignore it and just leave it alone, what happens with patellofemoral pain? Now, if you're wondering if this specifically applies to you, Patellofemoral pain is pain coming from the back of the kneecap, and it presents usually as pain, as a kind of diffuse pain around the front of the knee, like a vague pain around the front of the knee, uh, or it feels like it's behind the kneecap. And that's where it's coming from, actually, because the patella is the kneecap. So patellofemoral pain refers to pain on the back of the kneecap. And it's often worse with like longer runs, or higher mileage, or sometimes like you feel it when you're going downstairs after a run, or if you've been sitting for a long time, uh, like in a car, and they used to call it a movie goer's knee, because if you're sitting in one position for a long time, the kneecap presses against the thigh bone, and after a while, it kind of annoys it. So these are all signs and symptoms of patellofemoral pain. So if you have generalized diffuse pain in the front of your knee with running, or you can feel it behind your kneecap, then you might have patellofemoral pain. So what these researchers did is look at two studies that had followed 310 people diagnosed with patellofemoral pain, and they'd excluded other things like arthritis and that kind of stuff. So that all of these people had patellofemoral pain. And what they did was that they tracked them over time, but didn't do anything. So it was just to see kind of if you wait and see if you just see how it goes, what happens with patellofemoral pain. And this type of study or um, pattern in medical research is to look at the natural history of something. So the natural history of something is what happens if you don't do anything, if you just leave it alone to its own devices, what happens? And this is an important type of study to do because what happens if you don't do anything will determine what you might do to intervene. So sprained ankle, for example, most of the time just gets better on its own without any intervention. So you don't really need to do much. It'll just kind of heal by itself. So what we want to know and what these researchers wanted to know is if you just leave patellofemoral pain alone, does it get better? Does it get worse or does it stay the same? So what they did is they took measurements of pain and disability at the beginning when they ended the study at three months, six months, and then again at 12 months. And then they analyzed the results to see of those people who weren't doing very well, who still had quite a bit of pain, what were the common factors that might determine that they are that you are more at risk for having persistent pain versus those people who didn't have persistent pain where it did resolve. And probably the biggest takeaway from their analysis was a quote where they said, patellofemoral pain is not self-limiting. And self-limiting would mean if you leave it alone, it'll get better on its own. But what they actually found is that at one year follow-up, 40% of the participants still had significant pain and disability from their patellofemoral pain when you don't do anything. So if you don't do anything, there's almost a one in two chance it's still going to be there a year from now. When they dug into the data a little bit more, they found that that was more likely that sort of unfavorable outcome that they called it 
like still having pain a year later was more likely if you had pain that was quite bad initially. So the way they define that is if you had pain that was more than six out of 10 sometimes, so for a runner, it might be when you go on a long run, you feel pain that's like a six out of 10, then it's more likely going to be there still next year. So the more pain you have, the, the worse the pain is, the more likely it'll persist for a long time. The other thing they found that if they would had the pain for a longer period, so if they'd had the pain longer than two months, it was more likely to still be there a year from now. So if you've only had the pain for a few weeks, it's a little bit more likely to resolve on its own. If you've had it more than two months, the chances of it going away on its own are much lower. And then the final thing that they noticed is that the more disabling the pain was, meaning this kind of goes in concert with the worst, the, you know, the intensity of the pain. But the more disabling the pain was, the more likely it would still be there a year from now. So for a runner, this would be a pain that is making you significantly change your training, reduce your running, is more likely to still be there a year from now. Pain that is more mild, right, that you can kind of put up with and you haven't changed your training a lot, you can just feel it, that's a bit less likely to persist for beyond a year. So what does this mean if you're having patellofemoral pain? If you have runner's knee, if you have pain, a vague pain, a diffuse pain in the front of the knee when you're running? Well, the first thing is that waiting and seeing is not a very good strategy. It's not like some conditions where it's going to get better on its own most of the time. The chances are if you do that, it will still be there next year, or at least there's a fairly strong chance of it still being there a year from now. And the other thing is like the longer you've had it, the more likely it's going to be there a year from now. And this very much reflects my clinical experience where I would work with runners who'd had knee pain for a few weeks, and it was often really easy to treat and would go away pretty well. However, if they'd had it three, six, 12 months, it was much harder to get rid of, much harder to resolve. So the takeaways there is if the pain is bad, like more than a six out of 10 sometimes, if it's been going on a few months um, or it's quite disabling, it's making you reduce your running quite a bit, it's even more important for you to get that addressed sooner rather than later to reduce the chances of it still being there a year from now. And I kind of liken this to like a forest fire. So if you have a, like a small, relatively contained forest fire, that is much easier to put out than a kind of raging inferno that's kind of engulfed the whole forest. So it's, it's better to catch it early and it's much easier to treat. The worse the pain is and the longer it's been going on, the more difficult it's going to be to get rid of. And this isn't the only stu study looking at this. So this one, they followed up for like a year, but I have read others that followed up at eight, 10 and 20 years. And although not all of the runners still had, or all of the um, participants had knee pain still like that long later, a significant proportion of them did. So I think the, the big takeaway here is that wait and see is not a good strategy for runner's knee, for patellofemoral pain. Um, the chances of it going away on its own are not that good. And it's much better to have it looked at and addressed rather than just hoping it's going to go away on its own. Uh, something you might compare this to would be like the common cold, right? So the common cold is an example of a self-limiting condition. So I've actually got a cold at the minute, you might be able to tell. But when you get a cold, you don't really have to do anything about it. You just kind of modify your activities to um, maybe you take some stuff to kind of reduce the symptoms, but really you expect it to just go away on its own, given a certain amount of time because it's a self-limiting condition. Patellofemoral pain or runner's knee, pain on the back of the kneecap, is not self-limiting. It is not necessarily just going to go away if you just keep doing what you're doing. Chances are, not definitely, but potentially, especially if it's been there a while or it's quite bad, it's still going to be there a year from now. And other researchers looked at it and said, yeah, it still might be there several years, eight years, 10 years from now. So it's not a self-limiting condition. And that, that's the biggest takeaway for me, again, from this research. So if you have knee pain that is quite bad, like I mentioned, or it's been going on for more than a couple of months, or it's forced you to significantly reduce your training, or if you just want to catch it early and not let it develop into all of these things, then I'd suggest checking out my Runner's Knee Masterclass, which is now available. Uh, you can access it online by the link in the description. And in that Masterclass, I talk about strategies that are successful for Runner's Knee. And why a lot of things in traditional rehab doesn't really get at the problem, also, some things that you might not expect, like why runners with runners knee need to run more, not less, and how traditional rehab strategies often make things worse. It's really um, quite 
surprising and interesting. So if you want to check it out, click the link in the description to watch the Runner's Knee Masterclass. Otherwise, have a good one.